Hello, Jim. May I borrow a glass of sugar? Oh, hi, Cutlass. Sure, come on in. All right, it should be right over here. Also, I wanted to talk to you about something. Yeah? You should come back to school. Cutlass, no. Why not? You know why. Come on, Jim, you know it's time. It's time for you to get your life back on track. Come home, Jim. No, I can never go back there. You can't hide forever, Jim. Get out of my house, Cutlass. The only one you're hurting is yourself. Well, I guess I'll be on my merry way. Goodbye, Cutlass. Wait, wait, come look at this. What? The urban legend Mothman has been sighted going on a rampage throughout town today. He is eating people, he is destroying bridges. Mothman is incredibly swift and handsome, mind you, and can sense prey from hundreds of miles away. Please stay inside for your own safety. Shit, that's frightening. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to stay here for safety. Yeah. For sa for safety. Shall we entertain ourselves? Welcome, I guess. Uh, this is the sitting room. Lovely. Quite lovely indeed. You can get a book if you want. Okay, I'll have a look at your selection. Hmm. Anything mathematics related here? No. Oh. How unfortunate. I could go look if you want. No, that shan't be necessary. I'll just sit over here. Barnabas welcomed the visitor with open arms, providing him with beverage. He began to build a fire to provide the visitor with adequate warmth. Barnabas cooked him and his visitor a fine soup as it began to rain. They knew they could not go outside as it was very cold yet also rainy, so the external conditions would chill them to the very bone. Eventually, they retired to bed. Barnabas had an eerie feeling about the visitor, but he paid it no mind. At one point, deep into the night, Barnabas awoke for sounds that he could not identify. It was deep into the night, and all should have been asleep, but Barnabas felt a shadow looming over him. He looked up and saw that the visitor was standing in the doorway of his bedroom, knife gleaming in hand. <laughs> Is something the matter, Jim? How long have you been asleep? For a while. I'm all energized now. That's good. Shall we play a game? I have a wonderful idea for a game to play. Can I open my eyes now? Un <laughs> 
memento, Jim. How long does this game take to set up? It's a delicate game, Jim. Okay. It is ready. Golf, my favorite game. It, it took you this long to set up? It's a delicate game, Jim. Okay. I'll go first. Ah, oh, gosh darn. Your turn. Jim? Is that it? No. We're skilled. We play 18 holes. Why do you like golf so much? It's really the social element that I enjoy the most. People enjoy going on walks with their friends, but men like you and I we have goals in mind. We must always be achieving those goals. The holes for the golf ball provide us with those goals. It is the only way for men like you and I to reach an understanding. What's there to understand? We're just passing the time. I think there's more to be understood, Jim. Like what? I don't want to pressure you, but we'll find out in time. Miniature golf was invented to make the game even more social, even more like walking through a park. Now we're about as miniature as it can be in your house with only a single cup. What secrets will you reveal to me? None. I have none. What about why you're so scared to come back? You can't just rot in here forever. You can't even pay the rent forever. What are you going to do, Jim? Nothing! Just play the game. I cannot focus on the game when I am being eaten away by concern for you. Don't be concerned for me, I'm fine. I may have to do something to remedy this situation. I have to pee.
What's that stain on your pants? Oh, I didn't notice. It must be spaghetti sauce. I made spaghetti. Come hither. Please, have a seat. Eat up, it's my special recipe. Is something the matter, Jim? No, I'm, I'm just in a mood. Uh, it's probably the monster. Ah, yes, the monster. We're all afraid of that. Monsters sure do kill people. Cutlass, did you poison the spaghetti? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's. I'm sorry. It's just I've I've had a lot. I've been really stressed lately. It's been a lot on my mind. But I'm sorry, Cutlass. Apology accepted. Now eat up. How was it? It was good. Thank you for making it, Cutlass. So, why are you so against coming home and returning to society? The accident, Cutlass. The accident where my parents died in a car crash. They, were, they would have never had to pick me up if I weren't at that math tournament. They never would have had to drive through the blizzard to pick me up if I weren't at that math tournament. It was because of me. Because of me. Oh, Jim, you still blame yourself for that? Yes. 
That's why I can never come home. I understand. <clears throat> well, that was some greasy spaghetti. I, I better go wash my hands now. You bastard, I'll kill you! Oh, Jim, whatever could the problem be? You know what, go into the bathroom! What? How? how? Jim, I think the stress of the situation is getting to you. Let's go to bed. You need some sleep. Hello. Hi, I'm Bob the Lobster. Hi, Bob. I'm concerned. I think my friend Kellis is trying to kill me. Well, why would he do that? Because I won't come home. Well, why not? Because I killed my parents. Oh, that's a valid reason. Hey, man, you gotta you gotta forgive yourself. You can't you can't keep doing this. You got you gotta forgive yourself. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> You can't outrun your mistakes. Math Club didn't kill your parents. You did. It's all your fault. Your fault. Leave this house. Leave this house or I'll kill you.
What are you still doing here? Get out. Stay inside. <laughs>